Uh, this is section 3.6, the chain rule. We're going to find the derivative by expanding and then use the power rule. So we're going to make y equal to 9x squared minus, that'll be 12, 24x, and then plus 16. The derivative of this is 18x minus 24. We're going to keep that in mind. That's the derivative. We're going to find the derivative now by using the chain rule. The chain rule says if you have the composition of two functions, in other words, an inside function and an outside function, take the derivative of the outside function first, leave the inside one alone, and then multiply by the inside function. The outside function in this is the squared. It would be like having something squared. Y prime is equal to, we're going to do the power rule just like we did before, but we're going to pretend this entire thing is the variable. So we have 2 times 3x minus 4. Reduce that power by 1, that's 1. And see, we took the derivative of the outside and we left the inside alone. Now we're going to multiply by the inside function. And the derivative of 3x is 3. And the derivative of negative 4 is just 0. So we have 6, you know, 2 times 3, times 3x minus 4. And if we distribute the 6 through, we get 18x minus 24, and you can see that it's the same derivative right here, same thing. Let's practice. Find the derivative. <clears throat> We're going to multiply 5 times 15 because the outside function is <clears throat> this function to the fifth power. So y prime equals 75 times 4x squared plus 3x to the fourth power. That's the derivative of the outside. Now we have to take the derivative of the inside. So this is going to be times 8x plus 3. And that's the derivative of the inside. So this entire thing is the derivative. Rule 8 in your book says the chain rule. If f is differentiable at the point u equals g of x, and g is a differentiable at x, then the comp composite function f of g of x equals the same thing here, is differentiable at x. And <clears throat> the derivative of the composition is, like we wrote before, the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside. In Leibniz no notation, if y equals f of u and u equals g of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x equals dy du times du dx. See, u is the inside function right here. So you still have g inside of f. It's the same thing where dy du is evaluated at u equals g of x. Applying the chain rule, an object moves along the x-axis so that its position at any time t greater than or equal to 0 is given by this function. Find the velocity of the object as a function of t. So if this is position, then the velocity function is the derivative of this function. The outside function is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is sine, and we're going to leave the inside function alone. Then we multiply by the inside function, so times just simply 2t. Now, there's not much you can do with this. We probably like the variable in front. So all we can really do is just turn this around, and that's the answer we're looking for. A three-link chain. Suppose g of t equals a tangent of 5 minus sine 2t. The outside function is tangent, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now we leave the inside function alone. And now we take the derivative of the inside function, so times. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, so it's negative cosine of 2t. Now I know that the derivative of sine is positive cosine, but this negative kind of tags along uh, with the derivative. And then the innermost function is 2t, so finally we multiply by 2. Now the only thing we could really do here is put negative 2 out front. So we have negative 2 secant squared of 5 minus sine of 2t times negative cosine of 2t. Let's practice. Find the derivative. f of x equals 2 times 1 minus x to the squared to the third. So the derivative of f is equal to, we, the outside function is to the third. So we take 3 times 2, that's 6. 1 minus x squared squared and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So to clean this up a little bit, we have negative 12x times 1 minus x squared squared. 
In the second example, I'm going to write this as x squared minus 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. When we find g prime of x, the outside function is the square root or the 1 half power. So we're going to multiply by 1 half, leave the inside function alone for right now, and reduce this power by 1. So we have to minus 1. But this is a fraction, so we can minus 2 halves. That's still 1, which is negative 1 half. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x minus 2. Uh, so now we can clean things up a little bit. If we factored out a 2 here, we could cancel with the 1 half. So on top, we have x minus 1. Now that's factoring a 2 out of this, x minus 1. In the denominator, we have the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1. The negative power sends this thing to the denominator, and a 1 half power is, is the square root. We started with the square root. We want to end with the square root. In the next example, we're going to find y prime of this function. Well, actually, I don't want to start with y prime because I want to manipulate this function first to make the derivative a little easier. So we're going to make y equal to negative 4 t plus 2 uh, to the negative 2. So the derivative is going to be 8 times t plus 2 to the negative 3, and then multiply by the inside function, which would just be times 1. So the derivative is 8 over t plus 2 to the third power. In this one, we're going to, uh, well, we have two product. We have the product of two functions, I should say. So the first function is x squared. The second function is the square root. So the derivative of this one is going to be the product rule. So first times the derivative of the second. And the second function we can write as 9 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So the derivative of the second function is 1 half times 9 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Because we're going to reduce this power by 1. So we're going to minus 2 halves. And that's negative 1 half. So there's the derivative of the outside, the square root part, and now we have to take the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So there's first times the derivative of second plus the second times the derivative of the first. We don't like to leave negative powers. Uh, I guess first we could cancel out the 1 half with the 2, and now we have negative x to the third on top, and on the in the denominator, we have the square root of 9 minus x squared. And that's going to be plus 2x square root of 9 minus x squared. It's OK to leave a radical in a denominator, but it's not OK to leave this as a fraction and this not as a fraction. So we're going to do common denominator. I have to multiply this one by the square root of 9 minus x squared over square root of 9 minus x squared. That's the common denominator between the two. As a matter of fact, this is the only denominator. We still have negative x to the third, but now on top over here on the right, these two square roots are going to cancel each other out. So we have 2x times 9 minus x squared. And that's all over the common denominator. I can distribute the 2x through, so we have negative x to the third plus 18x uh, minus 2x to the third. And that's all over the common denominator. So we have negative, actually we can put 18x first, minus 3x to the third, all over the square root of 9 minus x squared. On the next one, we have lots of functions here. This is a very involved function. We actually have the first function right there. I should probably use another color. Let me switch colors. The first function, the, the most outside function is sine. The next one is actually squared. So that's the second function in. Cosine is the third function in. And 3x to the fourth is the fourth function in. So this is going to be a fun one. Y prime equals, the derivative of sine is cosine. So we have the cosine of cosine squared of 3x to the fourth times. The next function is actually the squared, because we can write cosine squared like this. 
like that. But we don't usually write it with the squared on the outside. We write it with the squared right in the middle. So we have times. Uh, I can bring the 2 down in front. So 2 times cosine of 3x to the 4th. And then we have a power of 1 here. So I, I didn't really need these outside uh, parentheses, but that's okay. The next inside function is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of 3x to the 4th. And finally, the last inside function is 3x to the 4th, so we have times 12x to the 3rd. Find the derivative at indicated point. Let's change f of x to x squared minus 3x to the negative 2 power. That way we can use the power rule to find the derivative. We have negative 2 times x squared minus 3x to the negative 3 times the derivative of the inside is 2x minus 3. The negative power goes to the denominator, but on top we have negative 2 times 2x minus 3, and that's over x squared minus 3x uh, to the third power. We're going to evaluate this at the x value, which is 4. Evaluate at x equals 4, and we get negative 2 times 8 minus 3 over 16 minus 12 to the third. So that's negative 10, because we have 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, over 16 minus 12 is 4, 4 to the third is 64, and we can reduce that negative 5 over 32.